Pastor Xavier Reese and the simple truths of the supreme authority reigning supreme. No world leader has ever done anything God did not know beforehand. No present world leader will do or go beyond what God will allow. No king, emperor, dictator, or prime minister or president has ever posed a problem to God. The prophetic schedule of God has never been interrupted or disrupted, ever. Welcome to Simple Truths, the daily half-hour study of God's Word with Xavier Reese, Senior Pastor of Calvary Chapel of Pasadena, California. The King's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, He turns it wherever He wishes. Throughout history, and even today, nations' rulers have the power and prerogative to rule at will. But the simple truth of Proverbs 21.1 is that the heavenly king has the ability to direct earthly kings in a manner that serves an overall divine purpose in the end, just as the banks of a river or canal guide their waters to an ultimate destination. Pastor Xavier illustrates God's overall sovereignty with regard to governments and rulers with the continuation of our study series of the book of Daniel. God gave uh, to several kings from Nebuchadnezzar sufficient evidence for their witness and testimony about the God of Daniel. God has always made himself known throughout history, not only to the people of God, but to other rulers that were not Jewish. So what we want to do is look at the testimony of two kings regarding the God of Daniel in these first six chapters, and let's examine them. Go to chapter 4. Notice verse 1 through 3, Nebuchadnezzar wanted to make known the God of Daniel to his subjects. This is something that he wanted everybody to know. The most powerful person in the known world was the speaker here, the king of Babylon. God had given him the kingdom, power, strength, and glory. Chapter 2, 27 also tells us. He was the head of gold of his dream. The first world empire of the time of the Gentiles in chapter 2, verse 38. He had conquered Assyria, Egypt, Syria, Ammon, Moab, Edom, and many others. He has everything under his hand. Now notice the greediness to all the subjects of his kingdom, to all peoples, the countrymen, to all the nations, those he has conquered and subjugated, and the languages that dwelt in all the earth. They're indicating the vastness of the uh, various forms of communication. Now the greeting was one of peace a desire for peace in the life of the people that he's writing to. And um, this is much like a New Testament epistle as you read, uh, peace be multiplied to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, something had changed in the king. It, it didn't sound like him. This is ruthless Neb. And all of a sudden, he, he's writing a love letter here. The one who had ordered the wise men to be slain the one who had um, allowed the sons of Zedekiah to be slain before his eyes at Ribla, and then plucked his eyes out and took him to captivity. Heartless. The message was about what God had personally done for the king. This is his testimony. Verse 2. He considered this information important. I thought it good. He wants everybody to know. Listen, when you... Come to know the living God. That's the first evidence you know you're a Christian because you, you got to tell people. It's real simple. If you're an undercover Christian, no such thing. The signs, miracles, as evidence of God's existence and the wonders, the contemplation and response to the miracles. The miracles is the deed, the miraculous. The wonder is the awe of it and well, how I respond to it. Both go hand in hand. The title is the Most High God, the highest, the supreme ruler of the world who had worked, don't miss it, on his behalf. This is his testimony. Notice verse 3. The message regarded his power and kingdom. God's signs and great are great and his wonders are mighty. He's, he's reflecting back. Having experienced this, now he can look back and see clearly in chapter 1 that God had prepared the four Hebrew children 
not now. God, he could see right there revealing that Daniel's dream and interpretation of the time of the Gentile was clear by the hand of God. He could see clearly the rescue of the three from the fire furnace of chapter 3. It's a whole different thing. Now you're born again. You can look back before you were born again. And you can see important incidents, things that, that, that you can know God was in it. Not you weren't saved, but he was confronting you, initiating. And certainly as a Christian, you can look back and see very key things in your life, which to God we could see as clear forward as backwards, but we can't. God's kingdom is not like those on earth, temporal, he says in verse 3. Great insight. It is everlasting. It will never end. Its dominion, his sovereign authority is from generation to generation. We're merely passing through history. God records his story. Divide the word. He's ever present. We come and go. These are most likely recorded documents that we are reading here in the archives of Babylon, as we stated before. These are things that, that aren't made public by politicians or rulers. They don't want the world to know. They want the world to see that they're strong and invincible and, and deity. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar wants this out. He wants everybody to know the God of Daniel. This is a clear witness of Nebuchadnezzar having come to know God. What follows from verse 4 to 37 is his testimony of how he came to know God. He doesn't say how bad he was and how ruthless he was. He shares how God humbled him. <laughs> Amazing. Now, go to the end of the chapter, 34 through 35. He says, and at the end of the time, after he gained his sanity, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lived forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Wow, how clear and precise now that he's been humble and he knows who rules. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar wanted to make known that God rules on earth and has sovereign control over the leaders of the world. Notice in 34, the king's mind was now one with God by his own testimony, by the personal pronoun I, learning the eternal quality of God and his kingdom. After God humbled him and set him on his throne, he says at the end of times, I never can never lift up my eyes to heaven and understand how he turned to me. So he's very clear about the event that he's just told about. He blessed, praised, honored the Most High, who lives forever. He confirms God's authoritative eternal dominion and the existence of his kingdom in every generation. Notice 35, the king learned personally that God rules heaven and earth. Wow. All the incidents of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will, the armies of heaven among the hands of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, hey, what have you done? The hands of the earth are reputed as nothing. The power and ability of human energy, power, ability is insignificant to God. The authority of God is supreme in heaven and earth regardless of what man does. Supreme regarding his purposes and decrease. None of those will be altered. Now, you still have free will. You can do as you will, but what you will does not affect the will or the decrees of God. That may bug you, but it's okay. And he allows you to make decisions according to your will, to your purposes. And then at the end of your life, he holds you accountable for them. But if he's the one that's directing your life, then you fall under the blood of Christ. You're justified. But either way, you will have to give an account in Christ or apart from Christ. Nebuchadnezzar learned what God intended, but not by force. Here again is the free will of man. In fact, he gives the reasons why in chapter 4, verse 17, in the middle there, it says, in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. That's God's purpose for Nebuchadnezzar. 
in verse 25, towards the end there, and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and give it to whoever he chooses. One more in 426. Your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. And Nebuchadnezzar came to know exactly that as he came face to face with God. Now look at 36 to 37. In the same time, my reason returned to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, my splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Nebuchadnezzar, in verse 36, wanted to make known the God return him to his throne. It was God who did it. That God had been faithful to Nebuchadnezzar when his reason returned to him, he says there. He sat on his throne again. Glory, my kingdom, my honor, my splendor, returned to me. Acknowledging his nothingness, that God restored all his faithful leaders to not only him, but the leaders, my counselors, nobles, resorted to me. Those faithful overseers who loved Nebuchadnezzar, faithful to him. And I'm sure that Daniel will have played a key role in this. That God increased Nebuchadnezzar due to his submission to God. I was restored to my kingdom. and excellent majesty was added to me, verse 36. God was faithful. Now, God didn't force Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar repented, humbled himself. And God responded in kind, but he initiated. Nebuchadnezzar responded. God didn't force him. That he, Nebuchadnezzar, worshiped the God of Daniel. Don't miss this. Verse 37 there at the beginning, doxology is his personal testimony to the praise of God's holiness and perfection in truth and justice. Listen carefully. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways Justice. Nebuchadnezzar believed in objective truth at this point. <laughs> Pilate says to Jesus, what is truth? Whoa, you're looking at it. The king was a witness that God could humble anyone and warns all to not rebel. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Daniel rebuked Belshazzar, as you know, for ignoring the historical account of his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, it's insanity in chapter 5, verse 22. Notice the fourth and last one's in chapter 6, verse 25 through 27. He says, the king, Then King Darius wrote to all people's nations and languages that dwell on all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men must tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. In verse 25, Darius made a public national decree about the God of Daniel, again here, like Nebuchadnezzar. The author's writing was this, is Darius, the shoulders and arms of silver. On the image of Nebuchadnezzar, God had revealed to him. Darius received the kingdom the night that Belshazzar was slain, being 62 years old, we are told in chapter 5, verse 31. Now, the author, Darius here, wrote to all the inhabitants, once again, the ethnic groups, all the peoples, includes nationalities, nations, foreign languages dwelt on the earth. All three are in plural. And the regards was that all will have peace multiply, well-being again. Now, you have the same kind of thing, but he's not Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Now, I'm sure he was ruthless to an extent as a pagan, but he's not like Nebuchadnezzar. The sense of well-being in every area of life here, as Nebuchadnezzar declared in chapter 4, verse 1. Darius, in verse 26, notice, has made a decree about the God of Daniel. Here are his words. The extent of the decree was in every dominion of his kingdom. Make note of that. Those under his control... He called it my kingdom because he was a co-regent. 
with other kings. The decree was that all must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Now, he's not born again. He's not like Nebuchadnezzar. But he's given an edict. It's being obeyed. He had just witnessed Daniel survive the entire night in the lion's den. Daniel had more sleep than Darius that night. Daniel slept like a baby. Darius cried like a baby. He loved Daniel. He was tortured for because it was because of his decree that Daniel was in there. Yet he's a pagan God. God will bring people to you and I who are great people, nice people, but they're not Christian. And it breaks your heart. He had just witnessed the accusers of Daniel torn to shreds and devoured by the same lions that didn't touch Daniel, removing all doubt that perhaps maybe they were old, toothless, and not hungry. He had been told by Daniel, an angel of God had shut the mouths, plural, of the lions, plural, one angel. This pagan king understood power. He understood a miracle when he saw it. Miraculous. Notice the decree gave the reasons why all were to tremble before the great, the God of Daniel. The God of Daniel was unique, for he is the living God opposed to the dead idols. The God of Daniel was consistently dependable and steadfast forever. The God of Daniel has a kingdom that is eternal. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. It just goes on and on. God's kingdom never stops. The God of Daniel is absolute authority. And his dominion shall endure to the end. Civilizations come and go. Nations come and go. Governments come and go. God's still there. Through everything. Now notice in 27. Darius made a decree that the God of Daniel was omnipotent. Who delivered Daniel from the lion's den. He delivers and rescues. And his works, signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Very specific. The evidence of his power, he delivers and rescues. The vastness of his power, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. It's his backyard. The particular incident, he doesn't want anybody to miss it, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. There will be many like Darius, who, though they are not antagonistic towards Christians or the gospel, and witness miraculous things in the life of believers, and yet they will not repent. They will never come to God. So we always rest on the character of God. God is just. He cannot make exceptions. He signed it in blood when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father by me. And if someone does not make that decision before they die, we are very clear on what happens to them. And we know there will be no injustice with God. He signed it in blood killed his own son. This is the testimony of Darius about the God of Daniel after he witnessed the delivering of Daniel from the lion's den. Incredible words. Now, let me just tie it together and give you the common understanding of these four passages about the God of Daniel. What are the things that are common denominator in these things? First, God is the one who knows the future, revealing the time of the Gentiles to Nebuchadnezzar. He is the head of gold. Babylon, the arms and shoulders of silver, Medo Persia Empire, Darius, Cyrus, the belly of brass, the Grecian Empire, Alexander the Great, the legs of iron, Roman Empire, two legs, east and west. The ten nation confederacy comprises of iron and clay, which is an extension of the fourth, the revived Roman Empire, the kingdom of the Antichrist. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is no other. I am God, there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are yet not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Amazing. Also, God is the one who is in control of history as we look at all these declarations of the kings. He's in control of history. No king... Emperor, dictator, or prime minister, or president has ever posed a problem to God. The prophetic schedule of God has never been interrupted or disrupted, ever. 
No world leader has ever done anything God did not know beforehand. No present world leader will do or go beyond what God will allow or disallow. Even if it looks like they're advancing their own agenda, God is in control for his purposes decrease. Never forcing anybody, but knowing what they're going to do. He knows everything. Otherwise, God would be captive for the future. It never affects God. In fact, Proverbs 21.1 says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord like the rivers of the water. He turns it wherever he wishes. God directs history while giving men and women a free will regarding their own decisions, their own destiny. The prophetic time schedule of God is right on time as God revealed it to Daniel for Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 2, 31 through 35. The first four empires have been fulfilled in history accurately, literally, confirming their inferiority. Babylon is the aristocratic, absolute ruler of one, head of gold. The meter Persia is oligarchic, ruled by few over many. Greece was aristocratic, rule of the nobility. Rome was imperialistic, rule of military. The Ten Nation Confederacy is imperialistic and democratic, ruled by military and majority. That's what democratic is, the majority rule. So if you've got good people, moral people, then it's pretty good. But if you've got perverted people, mm, that's bad. The Ten Nation Confederacy is not the fifth of fifth empire because it comes out of the fourth, the revived Roman Empire, as we'll see. God is one who has an eternal kingdom is another common denominator. The stone cut now with hands, theocratic rule of God. The kingdom of God is theocratic form available to all right now who believe in the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Romans 1, 16 through 17, to the Jew first and the Gentile. The first is not in priority of value, but of time. The Messiah was sent to his own. All are to be saved by grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. All must be born again, Romans, uh, John chapter 3, verse 3 through 5. The kingdom of God on earth will be instituted at the second coming for a thousand years, which is part of the overall eternal kingdom of God. Jesus will appear to establish the kingdom on earth for a literal 1,000 years. All Israel will be saved, the remnant, Romans 11, 25 through 26, Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 33, Ezekiel 37, and so many passages in the scriptures. Satan will be bound for a 1,000 years in Revelation 21 through 3. In the topic of the millennium, there is more material than anything else. We've done an entire series on it, and no one touches it. These are the common understandings in these four passages about the God of Daniel. And they're recorded for us to study them, that we might have our eyes on God and not upon the world that's going on. And as we look at the program of God, we can see we're right on schedule. We can see we're ready for the common market, the 10 nations, whatever they end up calling at the end, getting prepared to launch. One world market, one world banks, one world tribunal courts. God's schedule is right on time. I hope you serve him. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Pastor Xavier Reese with a brief overview of heaven's perspective of world history yet to come by way of the simple truths he draws from the book of Daniel. And today's study, titled The God of Daniel, is available on CD upon request for just $4. Having your own copy allows you to review the study again at your own pace. Plus, it's a great way to pass on this message to a friend when you're through. And everything Pastor Xavier shared the last time we were together will be included as well. So once again, the title to ask for is The God of Daniel, or simply mention today's date. You can request your copy by writing Simple Truths, 2200 East Colorado Boulevard, Pasadena, California, 91107. Or to make your request by phone, call 800-926-1485. Again, that's 800-926-1485. 
Or the address once again is Simple Truths, 2200 East Colorado Boulevard, Pasadena, California, 91107. And thanks for mentioning the call letters of this station when you get in touch. This helps us track the effectiveness of this ministry in your area. And then join us for more Simple Truths next time with Pastor Xavier Reese. Simple Truths with Pastor Xavier Reese, a daily half-hour broadcast, is a radio ministry of Calvary Chapel of Pasadena, California. www.calvarychapelpasadena.com 